Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day. To the rising of this life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose. The hand of God between us and each hand. The pain of Christ between us and each pain. The love of Christ between us and each love. O God, who brought us to the bright light of this new day. Bring us to the guiding light of eternity. We gather in God's name. We claim Christ's promised presence. Let us pray. Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the Word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. A reading from the second book of Samuel. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jashar. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields, for there the shield of the mighty was defiled, and the shield of Saul anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson, and luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons have, of war perished. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 130 
Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving you my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw, Je- when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be wa- made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed Jesus and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better but was growing worse. She had heard that Jesus was coming and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? Jesus looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before Jesus, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? 
But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When Jesus had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the little girl was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. And at this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. What comes to mind when you think about power? Do you think of strength? How power is also about strength? A powerful person might be one who has strength of character, or it might be a person who can lift a lot of weight, or it might be a person who is powerful in one's line of work, influencing people, or maybe unfortunately able to force people to do things under the pressure of power. Do you think of power as a force of nature, like a tornado, or the torrential rains that Iowa has had recently that flooded an entire town? Or like the rains we sometimes get with a monsoon? There are probably other ways you can think of and name what power is. A few weeks ago, the reading from 1 Samuel, Samuel portrayed ideas of power through leaders of nations, kings and judges, with the warning from God that this kind of power, the power of kings and powerful people, tends to lead to corruption, people oppressing other people, because people become too full of their own sense of power. And sure enough, the kings that were raised up for the Hebrew people, those ancient kings, Saul, David, Solomon, each fall into this greedy, corrupt sense of power, just as, Je just as God warns. The stories of Jesus are trying to offer us a different understanding of power, one that, one that aligns more with what God hopes. This idea of faith is that faith is a kind of power. So what is the power of faith? Two weeks ago, we had parables about sowing seeds. Seeds take root and grow into plants and offer fruit or grain or vegetable to harvest. F uh, seeds can f f uh, grow into wonderful things that feed us. And this is an amazing kind of power. This power is amazing. Could be, as one who gardens, I can assure you that the outcome is rarely in my power, at least not fully. Gardening is a lesson in accepting the force of nature and the power in water, sun, and temperatures. Like the miraculous force of nature, Jesus reminds us in the parable that we are not responsible for what happens. We are not responsible for any growth. We are responsible, though, for doing what we can to be planters of seed. So we're invited by God to participate with God in sowing seeds of love, hope, compassion, and then the growth is up to God. When the, whether the kingdom grows, whether people grow, this community grows, we're only asked to plant seeds of love, and God will do the rest. This is the power of faith. This is the power of love, grace, mercy, hope. This week, we have another set of readings that talk about the power of faith, but in a different way than we heard in the story of planting seeds. In today's reading, the power of faith is the ability of it to transform our lives. The challenges of life, of experiencing God's presence, of being centered in faith, are described in Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth in the Gospel reading from Mark. To live as a human being is to face challenges and difficulties which obscure our experience of God's presence. The woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years had to have been exhausted from the physical toll it was taking on her and from the years of humiliation and public scorn. 
Now there's at least one scholar of ancient Jewish ritual who describes the spilling of blood, losing blood from the human body in any manner, whether this hemorrhaging woman or from a cut or an injury, any time blood is spilled, it's a loss of the life force. Blood was considered the life force. The life force is the very source of God pulsing in us. Spilling blood, losing blood is an outpouring of God, of the life force within us. So spilling blood requires ritual to restore God's presence in our lives, to restore us back into relationship with God. This woman had the faith and the wherewithal to lean in close to Jesus and let his presence, the presence of God in Jesus, become a source of healing for her. And she was transformed. How can we lean in close to Jesus and be healed? Healed of our anxieties, our fears, whatever ails us. Part of that answer lies in what Jesus said to the woman. Jesus notices that the power has gone out of him. Yet his response to the woman is not about his power, but about hers. He says, your faith has made you well. Jesus then turns to Jairus and points out that the woman has just shown him, Jairus, what real faith looks like and encourages him to believe that his daughter can be made well also. The power of faith is its ability to transform lives helping us heal from the wounds that come from life's events. The power of faith is its ability to transform lives by anchoring us in God's presence in the peace of Christ. This gospel reading addresses ancient barriers to wholeness and belonging that are found all around in these ancient worlds. And it's what it means to be broken out of and away from belonging in community because one is spilling blood for one person or because well, we're not allowed, ancient people were not allowed to touch corpses, to touch dead bodies. Those were both considered to be unpure. But Jesus, in these readings, Jesus breaks down these barriers, revealing that faith is the power of God because no barrier is too great for God. The power of faith, as Jesus portrays it, breaks barriers by being courageous, daring, persistent. A woman discovers herself that she has a deep faith, she's courageous, she's persistent, and she's healed. And the little girl is healed as well, healed by the very presence of just being near Jesus. In contrast to a world that would have us believe that power is about physical strength or money, position, privilege, Jesus, as usual, offers us a counter view. Power, God's power, is the healing power of love mercy, grace, compassion. Our efforts to lean into Jesus, to absorb his power, is an act of faith that transforms us, changes us, empowers us to also be agents of God's power, respond to the suffering in this world with God's love, mercy, grace, and compassion. Let us say together, this affirmation of our faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female, and the beautiful diverse variables between and within. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. As a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be present everywhere, and God's kingdom will come to earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecost fire, life-giving breath of the church, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. 
spirit of fire, inflame in us a passion for justice and equality. That we may know the cleansing of our prejudice and fears and proclaim your freedom boldly, caressing your earth with humility. Spirit of compassion, infuse us with your longings for wholeness and happiness. That we may reach out to those who are hurting and disordered, enfolding on another with your love and tenderness. Spirit of wisdom, be within us in our journeying. Gently guide us along right paths. That we may be led towards transformation and in new beginnings in our world. Spirit of gentleness, touch us anew, releasing in us all that we are afraid of. That we may know your acceptance of us and freely accept and embrace others. Spirit of power, we pray especially for those who are sick and suffering. Please add your own petitions. Hold us in our powerlessness. That we may know your strength and become a voice for the voiceless, healing for the wounded and empowerment for the weak. Spirit of judgment, be tender with us and show us your mercy. That we may humbly learn of you and not be afraid of your prophets in the world. Spirit of comfort, draw near to us in grief and confusion and pain, especially for these who have died. Please offer up prayers for your family and friends. In your graciousness, bring hope, consolation, and renewal. That many may look and discover you in their midst. Spirit of dance, be our playfulness. That we may leap and laugh and enter your joy. Give us confidence in life and assurance in death. May the Spirit of God heal our bodies and make them places of communion. May the breath of God heal our hearts and set them on fire for justice. May the Spirit of God heal our nation and the world. Amen. The Gospels tell us over and over again of the joy which comes to us through Christ. When Jesus was around, lives were changed, the sick were healed, the sorrowful began to laugh. The good news is that this joy is now given to us, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Through the Holy Spirit, we are gifted with joy. We are sent forth to bring good news to the oppressed, to bring healing to the broken, to anoint everyone with the oil of gladness. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. through
your heart like a dove released hide in his wings a weary distant soul he'll guide your spirit home and be his love The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ go with you wherever Christ may send you. May this divine one guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May this holy one enliven you with all that you've been shown. May this gracious one bring you home, rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Amen.
Let us go into the world rejoicing. It is Christ who goes before us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.